on behalf of the membership of Rhodes United Methodist Church, we'd like to present you with a little gift for Christmas. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for everything you do. We appreciate it. Thank you. I appreciate that. It's all in love. Okay, have a Merry Christmas. You too. Lord, we lift up these names to you in memory of loved ones who are helping light the way. Ray Fox Sam Kurtz John Pugh Philip Dodd Buddy Delaney, Pauline Spencer, Gaylord Gus Toth, Bill Harris, Reverend Lowell Petrie, Malena Jade Lee, Connor Ryan Craig, Mr. and Mrs. Vedas Hale, Ruby Gibson, Mr. and Mrs. Fulton Henderson, Quentin Petrie, Valerie Webb. Mason and Mary Annie Britz, Joe and Liz Pugh. Now, Lord, we lift up these names in honor of those who are helping to light the way. Mallory, Tucker, Taylor, Ian, Paige, Kenneth, Elizabeth, Isabel, Noah, Gordon, Clark, Grayson, Joyce. We know that all these names we have lifted up to you today will help light the way so that Mary and Joseph will find the inn in Bethlehem. The shepherds will follow the star and find the babe lying in a manger. The wise men will follow that star, see the baby, and share the good news with the world. We are proud and happy to share these names and to help light the way for all of the world to see. May we always share that light and share the joy and love that you have given to each of us freely, unconditionally, and undeserved.
please join me in our call to worship. Unexpectedly, the time came. The child was born. The Savior of the world is here. Unexpectedly, the angels told the shepherds of the newborn Savior. The Savior of the world is here. Unexpectedly, the shepherds went and found the child lying in a manger. The Savior of the world is here. Please join me in our opening prayer. Gracious God, with joy and thanksgiving we gather as your people. We have come to hear again the timeless story of Christ's birth. In the excitement of this night, quiet our hearts that we may know the peace and fullness of this holy time. Shine, O light, in the darkness of our world. Sing, O angels, in the stillness of our hearts. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace among those God favors. This we pray in the name of the child of Bethlehem. Amen. Advent hope moves us. Advent love leads us. Advent joy stirs us. Advent peace stills us, that we might affirm our King Jesus. It is time we set flame to this Advent affirmation by lighting the Christ candle. We believe that Jesus is the Son of God. He was born of the Virgin Mary in Bethlehem of Judea. He was the long-awaited Messiah whose coming was prophesied. The same Jesus lives today in our hearts. He deserves our highest loyalty and total commitment. In Jesus Christ, our hope is fulfilled. Our love is consummated. Our joy is complete and our peace is sealed. Rejoice! A Savior is born. Thank you. 
Are you ready for Messiah to appear? Are you ready, Bethlehem, for the precious little gem? Are you ready, little town of Bethlehem? Child. 
While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. As she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the end. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone on them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told to them. Thus endeth the reading of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. What a feeling of celebration this night. What a joy that all this anticipation has come to a kind of fruition. True, there will always be questions about whether anything in the world will change around us because of this event. Transformation, change, always takes longer than we think it should. And often is different than we anticipated. But for now, we welcome. We welcome the baby. We welcome the stranger and the family with the same enthusiasm. We welcome the sojourner and the faithful together with the one who comes with healing on his wings. This is a night for celebration, a day of reflection and joy. Whether our celebration is loud and raucous with the laughter of children or quiet and reflective, there needs to be a celebration that God is faithful and that the promised one is with us. Emmanuel begins with something small, a new vision, a stronger hope, a baby in a manger, something small that will change everything. One of the most beloved Christmas carols was written in the 1600s, and it is so well known and so sung on particularly on this night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright. Let's think about those words for a minute. Those are really hard words to live up to for all of us. Because most of our Christmases are a bit messy. They're difficult. We may have pain and suffering going on. And we would struggle with the disparity between Mary and Joseph in the stable with their baby. Silent night, holy night. All is calm, all is bright. The same in a way in the manger, which we sang earlier. The cattle are lowing, the baby awakes, but poor baby Jesus, no crying he makes. It just doesn't seem quite realistic. If you have ever been 
around the birth of a child. It is typically anything but quiet. First of all, this night started with a lot of disappointment. They had to make a very long and difficult journey on foot to get to Bethlehem where Joseph needed to go and register. It certainly wasn't part of the plan for someone who was expecting a baby any day. There was also the anxiety of having to travel. And the closer they got to Bethlehem, the more challenging the journey became. Became because it became hilly and rocky and it was dangerous. When we think of the birth of a child, as blessed of an, as an event that, as that is, it is noisy. And imagine the birth of the Messiah. Not only was there the noise of childbirth, there was the noise of animals. There was the filth and smells of the animals. Here was Mary in a place she didn't want to be, getting ready for the most profound thing that God has ever done. Not exactly your ideal situation. It kind of reminds me of much that we have been through this year. We've had to change so many things. Things haven't gone as we expected. Here's an interesting thought. If all was calm and bright on that blessed night, Christmas wouldn't be necessary. Christmas came, God sent his son because the world was broken. God was working to transform the world and he was transforming the world through the birth of his son. It was not an easy time. As we've looked at Mary's life over the past Sundays of Advent, we know that her life was full of struggle as well as blessing. When someone accepts Christ as their Lord and Savior, it is a blessed event. However, just as we've read with Mary and studied and discussed and talked about for our own lives, your problems do not suddenly go away. We still have problems. We will continue to have problems. The difference is God is there to help us as we go through our problems. So becoming a Christian doesn't solve all of our problems. Again, this might be a hard sell for some people. So why do you follow him? If he doesn't fix everything for you, why do you follow Jesus? He leads our life. He showed this by his being here, who God is. His teachings taught us how to live. His death showed us mercy and his resurrection hope of eternal life. The world calls us to seek our own glory. Jesus calls us to seek God's glory. The world calls us to demand justice. Jesus calls us to demonstrate mercy, the same mercy that God demonstrates as he gives and takes care of each of us in, who are so undeserving. The gifts of Christmas are easily listed. Love. Love is number one on my list. God knows your name. God knows my name. He knows each of our names. And he loves us unconditionally. We don't have to do anything to earn this love. He loves us. Forgiveness and new life is another gift. Because God believes in what we can be. He forgives our problems. He forgives us for our sins. Because he knows within us there is a good person and he believes in that person. And then, of course, resurrection. Through the darkness, light is found. Following Christ 
again, does not solve our problems, but it does change our perspective. As I was reading the final chapter of the book, Not a Silent Night, which I've been using as a framework for our messages during Advent, I had looked at this book, I've had it for a couple of years, maybe five or six years, and I had skimmed through it before I'd read parts of it, and when I was given the opportunity to be able to speak, and preach as I thought of Advent, which is my, mm, it's just that time of year. This book popped in my mind. And so as I've gone through the book, sometimes jumping ahead, sometimes waiting, I will admit that this last chapter I saved to prepare for tonight's message. And so I go through the chapter and I'm almost at the end. And I experienced a remarkable God moment. Because the author of the book shares a story of a friend of his. They had met when they were entered seminary together. They were both preachers. And over the years, they followed and they were in the same conference and knew each other. At one point, Kathleen was diagnosed with cancer. An aggressive, very hard to treat cancer. And he shared her journey. And it so paralleled the experiences that I have had over the past two years and the things that Lowell chose to do. Like Lowell, she chose to continue preaching and sharing the world because she felt called to. And as her energy was drained, as she went through chemotherapy and radiation, she could no longer stand to deliver the message. And so she started to sit on a stool. Very familiar, very heart-wrenching. She continued to preach, as did Lowell, with her last breath. Some ask, why not stop preaching? Why not take the time to live your last days, months, or even years without the pressures of preparing a weekly service? I can answer that question. He lived, proclaimed, and trusted in Jesus, born of Mary, who came to offer us hope and grace and life. And in living, he felt called to preach and share the word. In living, and sharing his journey, his pain, his suffering, he was able to show others how to live their lives, even when we are in pain. In the end, light always has the last word. Those whom God chooses and blesses are not promised that life will be free of adversity, but that in the end, the adversity will be worth it because God will work through it. Throughout Mary's life, she saw God working through the adversity. The night of Jesus' birth, tonight. Despite the disappointment, the darkness, and the pain, a peace a joy, a love she had never known before came upon her. And she could truly say, all is calm and all is bright as she held her baby in her arms. When we, like Mary, hold Christ near our hearts, we too will discover a silent night holy night, 
all is calm, all is bright. That beautiful image, that beautiful experience is there waiting for us. All we have to do is accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, be with us as we once again relive the celebration of the birth of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. May we never forget Mary and all that she did to prepare her Son for his journey of teaching and showing us the way. We are thankful for all that you give us. And we have had such a challenging year, but we know that you are there with us to help us through all that we go have as adversity. All of our challenges, all of our struggles, all of our worries, all we have to do is turn them over to you and trust in the grace and understanding that you provide for each one of us. Not because we've earned it, because your love is unconditional and you will always be there for your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>